first just explain, these are the trunks of the vine, just in case anybody's not familiar with it. We have the trunks, the head of the vine, and these two are either the arms or the cordons. Um, you'll hear cordon, that's what we use most of the time. And what we're really trying to accomplish is to get our fruiting wood, which is one-year-old wood, as close to the cordon as possible. Um, the reason why is you can see here, this kind of gray wood, this is an older wood and it hasn't been pruned back enough. And so you can see here that this lighter colored wood, which is gonna be our fruiting wood for this year, is all the way up here at our very top catch wire. Um, that leaves us almost no space for leaf area unless we lay it down this way, which can also cause some shading depending on the vigor. Um, so we like to get our fruiting zone, bring it back down to the cordon as much as possible so we have this leaf area up here. You need at least about 14 leaves to ripen the crop. Um, that that kind of depends a little bit, but you can see if we were to hedge this shoot here, we would only end up with just a few leaves right here. Um, so in theory, this on this vertical shoot position, you would have hedged these vines and you just wouldn't have enough leaf area since we haven't been pruning back all the way. So actually this year, um, I would prune all the way back to here and take off all of this old wood. Some people like to use these loppers. I brought these, I just had them in my hand, so I started using them when you're going through and cutting. I actually prefer these smaller handheld pruners, um, but either either one works well. So what I just did with that though is actually called a thinning out cut. Um, I've thinned out back down to this fruiting wood. Um, with this vine, you're pretty much gonna have to start out with thinning out cuts. Um, but the first step would be to do a rough prune where you go back and prune all these shoots back to about four to five buds, which I'll do on this one. So you do a rough prune, and then you do a thinning out cut, and then you'll do a fine pruning after you do the thinning out cuts. But see, this is so far up in this catch wire, I'm gonna prune all the way back down to here. When you prune the vine, you're pretty much just injuring it. And so when you prune back really hard like this, it's going to trigger the vine to produce a lot more shoots. Inside this cordon will be something called latent buds. They're just kind of sitting there waiting for a reason to come out. So when I cut back on it this hard, I am probably going to trigger latent buds to come out of this vine. So we'll see some buds probably coming out here, here, here. You can see where they're most likely gonna come out, but they won't come out until I prune them back this hard and injure it like this. But this is, this is a perfect example. Um, this is what we want. You see this nice, nice cane, it's a nice brown color. It's coming almost out of the cordon and it makes it really easy to cut off that old wood right there. And I have a nice fruiting cane left right next to the cordon for this year. But you also see here, if you want to take a closer look, I did leave just a little bit there. There's a bud right there. I left that there hoping that that will push out in that position on the cordon. And you might be wondering, um, turning it back this severely will most likely affect your crop level this year. Um, so this would be kind of a, a vineyard renovation type deal. And it most likely will affect your crop this year, but it will definitely, um, you'll definitely see the ben benefits in the year after. So if you had to do this to all of your vines in your vineyard, I would recommend doing every vine, every other vine, or maybe every other row so that you don't drastically decrease your crop that year. You're more than welcome to do the whole thing if you want, if you can take a hit in your crop that way, but that would, that would definitely be up to you. Um, so you can see just on this one foot right here, if I left all these buds on here, um, I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty-four. 10, 11, 12, 34. 
I have about 15 to 20 shoots coming out of this one spot if I left all those on there. That'll be just way too many shoots and way too many clusters for that area. So that's why in the final prune, we go back to either one or two bud spurs and you can even alternate that. And this part is really easy because you can just go through quickly. I'm going to take that off. And it's good just to kind of look back and see what, like John was saying with the blackberries and blueberries, just to see what you have. Um, right here we have really good spacing. It's another thing you want to look at are the spacing of the shoots. And pretty much a hands width apart is a good, a general, a good general rule. So if you can get your hand in between each shoot, I'm gonna take this one off. Um, you've got pretty good spacing. You wanna take off any shoots that are really spindly um, or they're gray and diseased, you wanna take all those off. These actually didn't look like they had uh, hardly any disease on them. Um, so right in here, Again, there's going to be too many shoots coming out of this point. Even though I've pruned them all the way back, um, you're going to want to take off some of these shoots. So you can see I've pruned it all the way back. And I'll have about four shoots coming out right there, which will probably still be too many. So I'll continue going down, choosing the best wood. The best wood is this light brown color. Um, about pencil size and diameter. That's the wood that you would prefer to keep as your fruiting wood. You want to take off pretty much anything that's coming out of this head region. I'm going to leave this one just because it's in a good position. If I take that off, I'm going to have a pretty blank space from here to here. So that's the only reason why I'm leaving that one this time. take that off and it's okay to cut these big knots off um, I'd actually if I had something to I could probably get that off my loppers but it's okay to cut those big pieces of wood off and it's actually preferred so this is about where I would keep this vine um, after I've pruned it um, it'll probably still need to take some shoots off during the season. Um, I always like to mention shoot thinning when I'm giving pruning talks because they go hand in hand. Before you know it, you're going to be shoot thinning. 